Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shraddha Thunania. I am an MDS from the Department of Prosthodontics and Crown and Bridge. Today's lecture will be on supporting structures of the maxilla. So, in the part one of a series, we had studied about the limiting structures of the maxilla. In today's lecture, we will be studying about the supporting structures. So, what is supporting structure or what are the stress bearing areas? When an edentulous patient wears a complete denture and performs various functions like mastication, deglutition, etc., various forces are generated. These forces are bared by the structures underlying the denture. Now, based upon the stress bearing potential of various different anatomic structures, we can divide these structures into primary and secondary. As the name suggests, primary is able to bear more amount of stresses, secondary is able to bear comparatively lesser amount of stresses. Primary includes the horizontal slopes of the heart palate, secondary includes the crest of the residual alveolar ridge, the rugae, and the maxillary tuberosity area. Starting with the primary stress bearing areas or the heart palate. Heart palate is made up of various bones that is to maxilla and the palatine bone. Okay, so the palatine processes of the maxilla will join together at the midline and they will form what we call the median suture. Okay, okay, so the heart palate it varies in shape. Okay, it can be flat, rounded, U-shaped, V-shaped. Now, the effect of this shape basically affects the retention and the stability of our denture. Histologically, heart palate is covered with keratinized mucosa and the submucosa in the posterior lateral part of the heart palate contains glandular tissues. The horizontal portion which is present lateral to the midline will provide the primary support. Why? Because it undergoes least resorption. Heart palate will be divided into anterior and posterior. Posterior part will act as the primary stress bearing area. The anterior one third will act as the secondary stress bearing area. What is the clinical significance of the heart palate? Basically, the posterior lateral slopes of the heart palate. Basically, the trabecular pattern of the bone is perpendicular to the direction of the force. Okay, this makes the posterior lateral part capable of withstanding any amount of forces without marked resorption. After studying the primary stress bearing area, we go to the secondary stress bearing areas. We will start with the crest of the residual alveolar ridge. Now, what is residual alveolar ridge? It is basically the area that is left after we extract the teeth. The dotted areas will basically show the crest of the ridge. Now by definition, residual ridge is a portion of the residual bone and its soft tissue covering that remain after the removal of the teeth. Now, residual alveolar ridge resorption is rapid immediately after extraction of the teeth and it continues throughout the life of the individual, but at a reduced rate. So, the crest of the maxillary residual alveolar ridge provides good support. But, why, then why don't we call it a primary stress bearing area? Because it is subjected to resorption. Okay? Because it is subject to this resorption, we will term it as a secondary stress bearing area. Histologically, it is lined by thick stratified squamous epithelium. Even though the submucosa is thin, it still provides sufficient resiliency to support the denture. So one important thing that needs to be noted is that in the earlier times, the residual ridge was considered to be a primary stress bearing area. But now it is considered to be a secondary stress bearing area due to the continuous resorption of the bone as the span of edentulism increases. 
After studying about the crest of the residual alveolar ridge, we come to rugae. Rugae are basically nothing, but these are the raised areas that we see in the anterior part of the heart palate. The first picture shows rugae in the clinically in an dentulous mouth. The second picture shows rugae marked on a cast of a dentulous patient. This picture shows rugae marked on a on an edentulous cast. So what is the clinical significance of this structure? Firstly, it will help in taste and secondly, it helps in the function of speech. How does it help in speech? It basically acts as lingopalatal constant stops for speech. Something that we need to keep in mind is that rugae should not be displaced. Otherwise, the rebounding may tend to dislodge the denture. Secondly, they provide anterior posterior resistance to the movement of the denture. And thirdly, the increased surface area, they aid in retention of our prosthesis. After studying the rugae, we have the last secondary stress bearing area that is a maxillary tuberosity. Now the maxillary tuberosity, as we can see, is marked here behind our molars. In this picture also, we can see the maxillary tuberosity area here. This is the clinical picture, intraoral picture. What is maxillary tuberosity? It is basically a bulbous extension of the residual alveolar ridge. This is a residual alveolar ridge. The distal bulbous extension of our maxillary uh, residual alveolar ridge in the second and the third molar region, which basically terminates in the hamular notch, is the maxillary tuberosity. The posterior convexity of the maxillary body is termed as the maxillary tuberosity or the tuber. It provides resistance in the horizontal movement of the maxillary denture. The medial walls and the lateral walls, they tend to resist the horizontal forces as well as the torquing forces. What is the clinical significance of maxillary tuberosity? Commonly asked question. Basically, this area is less likely to resolve. The artificial teeth should not be sent on the tuberosity region. The tuberosities, they sometimes they exhibit uh, buccal undercuts. If this undercut is unilateral, it can be utilized for retention of our processes. Now, in a nutshell, we'll just see what supporting structures we just spoke about. Firstly, we spoke about primary and secondary. Among primary stress bearing area, we spoke about the posterior part of the heart palate, posterior lateral part of the heart palate, basically. That is this region A. Then we came to the secondary stress bearing area, starting with B, the green area, which is the crest of the residual alveolar ridge. Then we came to another secondary stress bearing area, that is this area, which is our rugae area. And last secondary stress bearing area is our maxillary tuberosity area. So basically, we have four supporting structures. We firstly divide it into primary and secondary stress bearing areas. Primary, we'll talk about the heart palate, posterior part of the heart palate. Secondary, we talk about the rugae, we talk about the crest of the residual alveolar ridge, and we talk about the maxillary tuberosity. Uh, very commonly asked questions during VIVA are about the primary and the secondary stress bearing areas. Well, that's all for today. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.